Hello everybody, my name is Chris and this is my channel, We Love Comics. Thank you for so much for wanting to take the time to listen to this video. And the first thing I'm going to tell you is this is probably going to be one of my longer videos. So I would highly recommend waiting until you have time to watch the whole video. But the good thing is you can watch it multiple times if you need to because I'm going to share some of my secrets. Now, a lot of what I'm going to tell you most, I can probably safely say most people have never talked about. This is going to be next level stuff. So this is probably not going to be for everybody. So this is going to be geared probably towards a smaller group. But the ones who listen to this and practice what I'm trying to teach, you will be amazed at how things will all of a sudden gravitate towards you that you never thought that you could get. So with that being said... We're going to get into some next level stuff. So be prepared and you have been warned. So some people, it's going to resonate. Some people are going to automatically dismiss it. I can't help those people. So the reason I'm doing this video, and actually I want to do it um, much later on, but I got a lot of people asking questions about my secrets and how I get so many decent deals, especially on eBay. Um, I thought this was the time to do this video. Now, make no mistakes. Am I the best person out there to get, always get the best deals? No, absolutely not. I see plenty of other YouTubers that are willing to put in the effort to go to yard sales, Craigslist, and things like that, and they find deals that I can't find on eBay. Now, as far as eBayers, I constantly check books that I buy and win, and I find that I'm usually one of the lowest that got that particular book at that particular grade on eBay almost all the time. Or at least I'm on the bottom of it. I never overpay. And that is a skill that takes time to master. So let's give you some of my tips. Because a lot of it is not going to be what you think about. The biggest problem that most people have when it comes to getting anything in their life is they tend to be their own worst enemies. And what I mean by that is, and this is a big factor, so don't take this lightly, because this is one of the number one things I want to talk about, is people doubt themselves. And unfortunately, this world kind of makes you feel that you're never going to be good enough, that you won't achieve, and people start getting that mindset. Now, if you've watched some of my videos before, and if you haven't, I highly recommend it because you'll hear this repeated over and over again. I talk about eliminating the emotion from any kind of purchase because what will happen is when you use emotion over your thought process, you don't rationalize and you just react. And you notice this world in general is very reactive these days that even if somebody has made a claim about somebody else, people automatically will believe it or disbelieve it without researching and following in deeper. So this comes to play when it comes to comic book purchasing. And I tell people all the time, eliminate the emotion. Learn to control it. Think about the process. And the first thing you have to do if you want to be successful at anything, is to first change your mindset. When you say that you can't do something, you are sending that energy to have that be reinforced. If you think of energy in this sense, energy is is a thing we're all made of. I'm trying to make sure I put this in a way people can understand. And when you put your emotion into something, emotion, break it down, E, energy in motion. That's what emotion is. It's energy in motion because everything that we do has to do with electricity. I mean, you have a spinal cord, you have a nervous system, everything is based on electricity, which is energy, energy in motion. That's why they say if things matter, well, what is everything made of? It's made of matter. So like I said, this is next level stuff. This is going to be deep. It's going to be hard to understand if it's the first time you're hearing this stuff. So this may be a video you may want to go over over and over again until you kind of, what I like to say, understand it. So 
when you give off that energy of I can't or it's too hard or that's out of my reach, you project that kind of energy and it is reinforced by confirming your belief by basically making your belief system come true. That's why things are hard for so many people because I'll give you a prime example. If I was to say to you, you have one month to come up with a million dollars, how many of you could actually come up with that million dollars? Now, most of you would say right off the bat, well, there's no way. Well, right there, you've doomed yourself to fail because if you start out by saying there's no way, well, then there's no motivation to do it. You're not going to put in the effort. You're not going to do everything it takes to get that million dollars. So I'm going to show you how easily you can, you can change it by just adding a hypothetical equation to it. Let's say, and you know, heaven forbid this ever happens, I wouldn't want to wish this even on my worst enemy, but let's say, just for argument's sake, that somebody kidnapped your entire family, everybody you love, including all your animals, all your favorite collections, everything that you love in life. And they say to you, they call you up one day, and they show you video camera images of your family, your, your loved ones, the things that you absolutely love in life, and say, they say to you, you have 30 days to come up with $1 million, otherwise everything that you love will be destroyed. Now let me ask you again, will you get that $1 million? Now, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but notice the difference. The first time I said, will you get them $1 million, most people would be like, there's no way I can do it. I'm not even going to try. So you would have ultimately failed because there's nothing technically to lose. There's no incentive. But when you take that same scenario, because nothing else has changed. The, the, the goal is the same, to get a million dollars within 30 days. So nothing else has changed. The only thing that changed is your priority. Because you'd go from in the initial conversation of I can't to now the new scenario changing the, uh, the perspective of your thought process to I must. And then you will do everything in your power. Now, that doesn't guarantee you will achieve your goal, but you'll have a much higher chance of getting what it is that you seek because you changed your mindset. So the first thing, and like I said, this could be done in life, but because this is a comic book channel, I want to base it on how you can get better comic books or the ones that you say are quote-unquote out of reach. So you have to eliminate the negativity in your life. And that is as easy as a light switch. You control how you feel. And trust me when I say, because those of you who watch my channel know I get hate all the time. I get people that will, you know, pretend to be friends. I get the thumbs down. I get the negativity my way. Now, you cannot control what others do. But you can control how you react to it. And trust me. I had to learn that the hard way. But that's the best way to learn things. That's what leaves the most impressions. Negativity has a good way of making you never forget something. So use it in a positive way. Like they say, when the world hands you lemons, make lemonade. So it's, it's the mindset that has to first go away. You have to change it. You have to make it into something positive. So instead of saying, I can't get something... You have to start thinking, well, I, I want, let's say it's Amazing Fantasy 15, which is not easy to acquire. I don't have one yet, but eventually I will. And I don't have millions of dollars yet, but someday I will. So if it's something, let's, let's make it a little bit more realistic. Let's say Amazing Spider-Man number 9, which is the first appearance of Electro. It's going to be a little bit easier to acquire. So you want to start with lower levels and then go up from there. Because if you just say, oh, I'm going to get Action Comics number one, you know, you can convince yourself all the time. But if you don't put in the effort and you don't put in the work, it doesn't matter. Because remember, everything is made of matter. See the words? It doesn't matter. Well, if you say that, then it doesn't create that matter. You have to know about physics, quantum mechanics to understand that. That's next level stuff. So you have to set yourself goals. So if you want, for example, Amazing Spider-Man 9, 
If you start out by saying, oh, there's no way I can get it, it's too expensive, well, you're never going to find it. You're never going to put in the effort. Now, you can't just sit there and say, I'm going to get that book, and it magically appears. You have to then start putting in the effort. See, the biggest thing these days is everything is instant. Instant messages, instant news, sometimes even instant foods. So people are conditioned to basically just a push of a button, something comes along. And when it comes to acquiring not your needs, because there's a big difference between needs and wants. I seriously doubt any of you are starving to death. At least I hope not. And that's because when you are hungry, you will get food. And if you don't have food, you'll find a way to get it. In other words, that's a priority. So it, you ever notice you never really go without? You always find a way? It, be, it, it almost becomes natural to you. You have to think that same way when it comes to getting something that you want. So if you want Amazing Spider-Man number 9, get rid of the, I can't. You say, I'm going to get that book. Now you have to figure out how you're going to get it, which means you now have to put in the effort, which means you have to do research on it. So the first thing you should do is learn all you can about that book. Then you want to learn about grades of comics. Then you want to learn what the average price has been recently. It doesn't matter six months ago, two weeks ago, ten years ago. It matters at this moment because as we know, Information can change at any moment. And like you saw with the Silk announcement the other day, a book that was the day before $20 was now $1 to 200 within 24 hours. So it can change quickly. That's why I don't go value-wise based on comic book price guides, even ones on the Internet, because they can change at any moment. So what I base the pr prices on is mainly on eBay the sold, not the listed. Don't go by what's listed because anybody can sell anything for any price. I have a pen in my hand right now. I could try and sell this pen for a million dollars. Is it worth a million dollars? Well, only if somebody's willing to pay it. So a price is never set by a seller. It's set by a buyer who is willing to pay it. And that's why I tell people, be careful what you spend your money on and how you spend it, because then you are setting the next diagram of what price levels we're at. But again, you have to do your research. Go to the eBay section. They have a section on the left-hand side where there's a big list that says bought, purchased items. See what people are paying for it. And, and put yourself in a realistic goal of saying, okay, a 1.0 Amazing Spider-Man 9, I've seen purchased as low as $60. So $60 is not impossible. But let's say your range is between 60 and 150 So now you've set a price range, which means if you are looking for that book, you have the ability to set a price range of what you're searching for on eBay. So set it for that goal. Or set it a little bit higher and see what's out there. You have to put in the time and effort. Now here's the next thing. Patience is a must. It is a rare thing that a book you're looking for is just going to fall in your lap the moment you think about it. It's not impossible, but it's rare. A lot of books that I have wanted have taken me years to acquire. And it doesn't mean there weren't opportunities that presented themselves. They were just either not the comic grade I was looking for, or not the price I was looking for, or I just didn't have the money at the time. It was just not the right time. So you have to get yourself used to the fact that sometimes you're going to fail, or you're going to pass an opportunity up. Don't get discouraged and say, like, for example, let's say it's taking you six months and you finally found an auction that's within your price range for that particular book. And you bid on it, and all of a sudden, let's say your range was as high as 200. And let's say it started at 90. You're thinking, all right, I'm doing good. There's five minutes left in the auction. The comic that I've been looking for all these months is right in front of me. It's at $90. I'm going to start bidding. And then you see all of a sudden the last minute. 
there's a bidding war and you see it getting higher and higher well if it goes past your limit stop and move on and accept that loss the biggest mistake people make is they get so again emotionally involved in that bidding war like i have to be the one that wins that they go over or never even set a price goal and then when they get the book they tend to have what they call buyer's remorse because you overspent or the comic wasn't worth what you paid for it i see this all the time that people overpay when all they had to do was check new listings where even a buy it now is cheaper than the auction that was ending at that moment so you ever hear in in life you get what you give well if you put zero effort into what you are trying to acquire is it any surprise you're not getting the things that you want if you are always negative and see things from a glasses half empty perspective is it any surprise that there are always things coming to you that make you feel negative you have to understand how the world works on a deeper level to do even something as simple as collecting a comic now of course you don't have to there are going to be plenty of people that have not listened this far and said oh this is crazy talk this is tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist bs and that's something that people can think about if they want you have to learn things about how the universe works on a deeper level to understand certain things i mean if you're a first grader and i started speaking to you in latin you would have no clue what i'm saying so of course you're going to think it's gibberish and nonsense it's not until you learn through your stages of life that you progress to that certain point that one day you're ready because you have to first learn english you have to learn how to speak before you can all of a sudden learn in, in ancient forgotten language like latin and then one day once you get to that level and you start to study and practice and it takes you years to understand it all then one day you will understand what that person was saying but until then it's going to sound like gibberish now just imagine the person that started out thinking that language was gibberish and never did all the steps it took to learn it it will always be gibberish to them so like i said the videos like this are not going to be for everybody because the ones that will automatically dismiss it are the ones that are telling me that they're not willing to put in the time effort to see what's basically simple science which really isn't simple quantum physics and quantum mechanics is very deep and not everybody can learn it and you're not going to learn it right away it takes time and that's why i want to share some of my secrets because you know i don't get comics for free although i've gotten very cheap comics but you ever notice and like somebody said in my videos i'm always showing key issues and here's the funny part i don't search for any of them when i go on ebay i am so confident in my ability that due to the fact that life is energy and magnetism that's why everything is round because energy pulls everything in and as it condenses upon itself it creates a sphere like image and because everything is made of atoms everything is made of electricity even your comic books which are pieces of paper but on a molecular level they are all made of atoms electrons it's all energy energy can be influenced by a magnet take an old CRTV and I don't recommend that if it's something in your household that your family is using but if you take a magnet and put it next to a CRT TV all of a sudden you will see all of the pictures and images and colors pull towards the magnet whether people want to believe in that or think it's hocus pocus or dismiss it belief has is irrelevant to what is because you could say you don't believe in air because you don't see it you can't taste it you can't touch it doesn't mean it's not there so belief is irrelevant as a matter of fact if you write the word belief there's you can see the word lie but that's a level for another time so like I said, this is going to get pretty deep. This is next level stuff. But when I purchase a book, I am so confident in my magnetic pull. You ever wonder why you get attracted to something? It's all in the words. But I never look for a specific book. But yet, if I go to either the ending soonest or 
the best buys and the best offers from the newly listed books, I always find something that seems to be, at least as far as eBay is concerned, some of the lowest prices available. It's not luck. Those who think that luck actually exists are people who do not understand how life really works. And again, you can call it crazy. They can call it tinfoil hat. They can make fun of it because people that are not willing to put in the effort, it's very easy to dismiss something. There's something, I don't remember the quote of the famous person that said it, but I mean, you could just listen to Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, where even Spock um, said this quote. It is easier to destroy than to create. Because let's say you're creating a picture. You first have to learn how to draw if you're not naturally gifted. You have to get all the materials. You have to get the canvas. You have to get the paint. You have to get the brushes. You then have to give yourself the time that you need to make a creation because you, unlike most artists today, you don't just throw paint on a, on a canvas and call it art. To me, somebody like Bob Ross or Alex Ross, take your pick, either one, because they're both great artists, they put a lot of detail into their work. That's not instant. That takes time. I'm sure the Sistine Chapel was not done in a weekend. It probably took years. But all you need is a nice little tank to destroy it in an instant. So in other words... That it's easier to be negative because it doesn't require any effort. It's easy to be angry because it doesn't require any skill. It's easy to be ignorant because it doesn't take any learning. So again, these things that I'm trying to teach you is more than just comics. This is about life in general. Changing your attitude is a must. Putting a mental image of what you want, setting goals, can help. But if you don't put in the time, if you don't put in the effort, if you don't have the patience, if you cannot control your emotions, again, emotion, energy in motion, you will always fail. But the beautiful thing is, once you're tired of failing... And tired of doing what everybody else does, which is the not wanting to try kind of mentality, and you change your mindset, it can change as fast as you flipping a switch on a light. When you doubt yourself or you doubt what you hear, you create that very thing. Like I said, if, if, if you are going to go into a, into a race and you've never raced before, Let's say you're a little bit overweight. Let's say you're a little bit out of shape. And all of a sudden, somebody says, you're going to compete with a marathon runner. What's your first response going to be? Oh, I'm not going to win. So what are you going to do? You probably won't even get out of bed that day and actually participate in the race. So you've actually created the very thing that you believed in. You said you can't win, so you didn't motivate yourself to do anything. You didn't even participate in the race. And like they say with, with the lottery, you got to be in it to win it. You've created your own truth. It verified what you said. Life will verify what you say. And it's usually what you feel, not what you believe. Because many people say things that they don't truly feel in their hearts. I mean, how many people in your life you've either said to or heard from the word I love you, and it didn't really mean more than the word. So the best way to change that around the whole racing scenario, is to say, all right, I have a lot of work ahead of me. If I want to win that race, I have to put in the effort. That means I have to start eating better. I have to start being healthier. I, start, I have to start exercising. I have to start practicing. I have to build up, and I will give it my all like my life depended on it. And I may not win, but I will do the best that I can. So you have to say to yourself, when it comes to something that you want, are you willing to put in the effort? Are you willing to put in the time? Are you willing to change the attitude of being negative? Are you willing to accept that sometimes you may fail and still continue? Because like a famous song once said, I get knocked down, but I get up again. 
There is no shame in being knocked down. The shame is when you decide it's not worth getting up. If you stay down, you will be defeated. And just look at my channel, for example. I cannot understand why some people think the way they do about me. It just doesn't fathom it, because if you look at my videos, it's all about trying to help people. And yet, for whatever reasons, there are people who some flat out hate me. To the point where I originally shut down my old channel. I let them beat me. They didn't beat me, I let them beat me. Because I had the choice of giving up or not. So, no matter what somebody else does, you can't control what they do. You can only control what you do. But you notice I'm back. And within a year's time, I'm already up to 3,500 subscribers. Now, those people that don't like me still don't like me. But what I did was, instead of giving my energy to them, for them to feed off of, I've kept it to myself to help those who are here because they want to be here for the right reasons. And I will make this channel this, as successful as as I could make it. But you notice the effort I put into it. I make a video almost at least every other day, if not every day. I take sometimes hours responding to every single comment. When somebody makes a suggestion to a video or inspires me to make a video, I put it out there. I share my information. And you'll notice the ones that have the biggest issues with me their channels do none of those things, or very few of those things. Again, you get what you give. So this is not about ego or anything. It's trying to share with you that you have to have the right mindset, but you also have to put in the effort. And you also have to ac accept that sometimes you're going to fail. But don't use failure as a way to give up, because then you've truly failed. Get back up again. I mean, I'll give you an example. One of the books that I've wanted for a long time was Tales of Suspense number 52, which is the first appearance of Black Panther. If you watched or was part of my old channel, that was on my 2015 wish list. I did not get that book until earlier this year. So that is approximately three years later, because I don't remember the exact month that I made that wish list. It could have been in January, but I'm not sure. Or it could have been, you know, the end of 2014. I don't remember. So it's been approximately between two and a half and three years. Do you think I haven't seen auctions for that comic book during that time? I absolutely have. There were ones that I've placed bids on. But because I set a price goal... I never went past it no matter how much I wanted that book. Always thinking that there will always be another opportunity. So I want you to think about that when you're buying a comic book. Because like I showed with that Silk book, I back in my old channel. Now if you weren't there or never knew I existed back then, there's nothing you can do about that. But the ones that had and knew about it, back in 2015, I was telling people to get Ultimate Fallout 4 which you could get at the time between 10 and $15. I was telling people to get Edge of Spider-Verse 2, first appearance of Spider-Gwen. At that time, those books were only 25 to $30 a piece. I was telling people to get Marvel Sp Spotlight 32, first appearance of Spider-Woman. You could get that for around $30. I was telling people to get Shazam number 1. Under $20, it could be purchased. But because at that time... There were no movies. There were no rumors. There were no announcements. Nobody wanted them. And most people have what I like to call, and many people like to call, the herd mentality. In other words, they only do something or they only like something because somebody else is doing it or somebody else is getting it. To me, I don't follow trends. Trends to me means somebody came up with an idea or a product and now everybody else wants it when they never even knew it existed at that before that day. And they're all following what somebody else wants. And let me tell you a secret. Businesses love those people. 
because they use your emotions against you to not stop and think, but to react and say, I want, instead of saying, all right, can I get it at a better price? Why do you think if you've ever seen commercials, it's always limited supply, limited time offer, act now, supplies are limited, or they put a timer and says, oh, you only got five minutes to get this opportunity. It's because they want you to automatically just buy it without thought. And companies take advantage of people who cannot separate emotion from logic. Because it's very easy. Like when I showed that Silk video, the people who saw it immediately were the ones who got the deals before people had time to react. But those who listened to me back in 2015 didn't even have to worry because they bought them before everybody wanted them. So you notice that when I made that video, all of a sudden, everybody went on either buying or selling spree. And I, I do have to say, anybody out there that had that book, let's say it was about $20, and all of a sudden put it on eBay for 200 I I just have little respect for those people. I mean, if you're trying to do it to pay your bills because you're about to lose your house or something, that's an exception. But people that are flat out trying to take advantage of other people, it's wrong. But here's the thing. If you put in the effort, if you don't base things on emotion, if you plan ahead, you would not have the ability to give anyone the reason to take advantage of you. Because if you think it's unfair a book went from 20 to 200, well, no one's forcing you to buy it at 200. And no one stopped you from purchasing it when it was 20. So take responsibility and think that if you miss an opportunity you just say okay i missed out how do i avoid that feeling use that negativity use that loss as motivation for the next time because believe me i don't have every comic that i want yet and maybe some comics i will never be able to get just because i want something and just because i put in the effort and do the best that I can and do all the research does not guarantee success. And I'm okay with that. That's why when you see my unboxing videos, when I do, like, for example, my PGX unboxing videos, when I don't know the grades, I'm happy regardless. I have three books that are coverless that I absolutely love that, as of now, I could not afford to get any other way. I have Fantastic Four issue number one, which has a facsimile cover. I have Amazing Spider-Man issue number one, again with a facsimile cover. And I have Superman issue number two. To me, that's amazing that I even own those. So you have to, if you want something, you have to have the love in it. If your interest in comic books is solely so you can get the best price, you can turn around and sell it for the best price, you're not really putting the love in it. Now, some emotion is okay. Like having a love for something. I'm, when I talk emotion, I'm talking about the negative emotions, the ones that you put yourself down, the ones that you set yourself up with doubt. If you use the emotions of encouragement and positivity, those are okay. So you don't want to become a cold robot. And like anything in life, it's all about balance. So I know this might be very deep or different from what you've probably heard on any YouTube video ever when it comes to their, especially comic books. And many people will not be ready for this. Many people will dismiss it as crazy. Like I said in the beginning, those are people I cannot help, nor do I want to help. Because you have to first help yourself before you can help anyone else. And that's a journey that I find fun. I love learning new things. And like I said before, I've gotten to the point when I go on eBay to look for a deal, my mindset is I'm just looking for a deal. Because when you change your mindset and you have that magnetic pull and understand that that's how life works, it all is energy and magnetism, that comics find me. I don't search for any particular book ever. I've never written Tales of Suspense 52 
in the search engine ever. But I'll find them. And I got one that ended up being graded a 7.0. It was a, it's a beautiful book. And I only paid $149 for it. You can't even get that at a 0.5 to a 1.0 for that price. So I'm not trying to brag. I'm trying to instill confidence and a, a mindset change. Because you're not going to hear things like this on other people's videos. Because they focus only on the materialistic part. And that's okay. Every person is going to be at a different level at their time. Some people are in kindergarten. Some people are in sixth grade. Some people are in their fourth year of college. Some people are beyond college and now are the teacher. It's just what level are you willing to go to? Because if you start out as a kindergartner and learn how hard and difficult it is and you're not willing to do the homework and do the effort and by ninth grade you quit, well, don't be surprised. You're not going to get a master's degree and you're not going to know certain things in life. I didn't learn about quantum physics or quantum mechanics in school. It was nothing I was interested in. It was later on in life that I started learning about this because I wanted to learn how this crazy wor world works. And I also wanted to learn why negative things always happen. Well, negative things tend to happen because we learn something from negativity. I guarantee you, you won't remember what you did for your second birthday unless something tragic happened. Then you'll never forget it. You'll remember the smells You'll remember the situations of where you were. Tragedy has a very interesting way to make you never forget things. And if you can learn from them and become better at something, then were they really bad? Because always remember, what has already happened is gone. It only lives in your mind, which means it only affects you when you bring it back to what is now just now live in the now be more positive it's not always going to be easy but like they say nothing work nothing worth having is easy you ever see the movie and if you haven't I highly recommend it a league of their own with Tom Hanks uh, about the baseball when women were playing baseball in World War two and the men went to fight and I think it was, I forget the main character, the main woman's name. I think it was, Gina, uh, it was Gina Davis. That's who it was. And near the end of the movie, she quits the baseball team, even though she's the star. She's the one that it came naturally, but she also put in the work. She was the best player in the league. And at the end, she her husband basically comes back from the war and convinces her to quit. And she tries to convince herself why she quit. She didn't really want to. She didn't want to admit that she really had a love for the game. And when Tom Hanks's character, when they're when they're picking up all of the other players to play in the finals, and Gina Davis is there packing up, leaving, Tom Hanks is trying to convince her and ask her, you know, why she's going. And she says, well, you know, it's a game that's hard. She tried to convince herself that's why she left, because it was too hard. And Tom Hanks turned to her and said, it's supposed to be hard. Because if it wasn't hard, then everybody would do it. And if everybody did it, it wouldn't be very special. So if you view just something as simple as comic book collecting as hard, you will give up. But if you see it as hard, but it's a challenge that you are willing to do your best to overcome, then just imagine the reward that you will get. And that's why you'll see some people that'll get something like Amazing Fantasy 15 and be like, oh, I got this book. No excitement. But you'll see somebody like me because make no mistake, I'm no millionaire. I struggle financially, but I always find a way to have just enough to get the things that make me happy, that fill me with joy. And I would hope to think that people that watch my channel for the right reasons will feed off of or at least see or feel the energy of positivity from my channel for the most part like when I do my unboxings and I get no matter what grade whether it's a 2.0 restored or a 7.0 white pages I'm happy regardless 
that you could feel the positive energy and hopefully it rubs off on people. And one of the biggest things I enjoy doing is teaching people to reach another level. Even if it means I will be mocked for it because some people do not understand it. If I wrote the title you see in front of you, Sharing My Comic Book Purchase Secrets for Those Who Are Ready for the Next Level, if I wrote it in hieroglyphics, it would look like gibberish to you. Of course it's easy to make fun of that because you don't understand it. People mock what they don't understand. So it took me years and decades to realize because like I've said on my other channel, which is more about stuff like this, you have to have real eyes to realize that when people are not understanding of something, they make fun of it. Because why? It makes them feel better about themselves. It's all about projection. That's why I don't let the negativity affect me like it once did. Although, that doesn't stop them from trying. You'll see the thumbs down in this video. It'll be from people that will never even watch it or not understand it or think it's crazy. And then they'll wonder why they're staying years upon years of being bitter, angry, and unhappy. When those who are willing to put in the effort, those that are willing to change their mindset and think in a more positive way and act on that positivity and actually not believe in their pos possibility, in the positivity, but know they've changed and know they've become more positive, that all of a sudden their life changes for the better. If you're overweight and you sit around complaining about it and you make other people feel ashamed because it makes you feel better, it's not going to change your weight. No matter how hard you wish it, you have to get up, you have to exercise, you have to eat right, you have to sacrifice. Like they say in the gym, no pain, no gain. So if you're a person that's overweight and you just want to spend your life using that hatred you feel for yourself by passing it on to others and hurting them because it makes you have that moment of temporary happiness, well, 20 years later, you're still going to be overweight, you're still going to be angry, and you're going to wake up and realize your life has passed you by and you didn't get anything you wanted. Or you can get off your butt, do the very things that you want to achieve, and put the effort and blood, sweat, and tears it takes. It still doesn't guarantee it, but you have a better shot. So for those of you who say, I can't get a comic book, you won't. But if you say you will get that comic book. Now you have to back it up with effort. Otherwise, life is saying, all right, you say you're going to get it, now prove it, because you're not going to get it until you get off your butt, change your attitude, change your mindset, do what it takes. So are you willing to do what it takes to reach the next level of anything in life? Now, you can kid yourself and say, yeah, this video or something else inspired me. And then just give up six months later because it's hard. Life is going to test you. It's going to see if you're full of you know what or not. How many people, for their New Year's resolution, will buy a gym membership? Because they want to change their life. And they'll actually go to the gym. And after about a month of not seeing results or realizing how hard it is, they all give up. Well, do you think they're going to be in shape by giving up? No, you have to continue. You have to get past it. Because if you know anything about muscles, and me being a licensed massage therapist since 1995, that it takes 30 days of any activity just for the body to get used to it. So the hardest part of any journey is the first 30 days of it, especially if it's something you're not used to. So even if you listen to this advice and you start changing your mindset, you're going to be hit with a lot of negativity to test to see if you are full of garbage or not. Or you're ready to actually get past stuff. Because trust me, the first 30 months of going to a gym, you're going to be sore as you know what. It's going to be hard. You're not going to be able to lift very many things. And if you try and overdo it, you're going to injure yourself. But if you get past it, and you continue to work past it, and you continue to work hard and eat better, it can take months or years but eventually you'll get where you want to be. Because trust me, even with steroids, Arnold Schwarzenegger did not go from one day being a weakling little kid to all of a sudden being the massive person he was in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. That took dedication and a lifetime of dedication. And if you're not willing to put in that effort, 
then you could be one of those haters, one of those doubters, one of those ones that do nothing but be angry and project their anger on others to make them feel better. But that's a black hole that will never be filled, and one day they will wake up on their, right before their deathbed and say, wow, my whole life was spent on hurting others and never getting myself to be better than where I wanted to be. You are only stuck if you believe you are. Now, that doesn't mean the road to getting unstuck is going to be easy. It's going to be probably the most living heck that you can imagine. But just imagine if you went through all that and came out the other side better. How rewarding would that be? And I'll give you, an, again, an example of mindset. And if, if you have listened this far, I want you to say the words Cracker Jack in the comments section. And I want you to read the comments and see how many of them will not have the word Cracker Jack in it. But they'll say, oh, great video. Now, I appreciate anybody that watches any part, but somebody that listened to now 46 minutes of a video is definitely going to start improving their life. Because the haters, the ones that are the angry ones that I talked about, they'll have thumbed it down before even listening to one word, or they'll hear one part of this and say, oh, this, is, this guy's crazy. And they'll wonder why, as some people rise, they stay stagnant. Because a bird only gets to fly and soar above the clouds when it has the strength in the, to build up its wings. You cannot fly if you're sitting in the nest, even though it's comfortable and safe. If you want to be comfortable and safe, be careful what you wish for. You're never going to fly. So I totally got off track and forgot the example I was going to use. Oh, okay, I remember. The putting in the perspective. How many of you go to your mailbox to get your mail every day or every other day? It's not very exciting, is it? Because it's either right connected to your front door or maybe they push them through the door into the front part of your house or maybe you have to walk 25 feet to your mailbox. Not very exciting. Your life isn't risking anything going there. So you get the mail and you walk back, no big deal. That's how most people's lives are. It's kind of just going through the motions, no big deal, no effort. doesn't take much effort to walk to your mailbox. So you're not going to get much out of that in life. No one has a goal that says, I'm going to go to my mailbox and get mail. It's just routine. It's like breathing. You don't think about it. Until all of a sudden you have asthma and you can't breathe anymore. But let's say all of a sudden your mailbox is on the top, the top of Mount Everest. And the only way to get the most important mail in your life, let's say there's a check for $1 billion. But the only way you can get it is if you climb Mount Everest. That's not going to be easy. How many people are going to be at the base of that mountain and see how high it is and hear how dangerous it is and see all the pictures of all the dead hikers that are still on that mountain to this day and just say, oh, there's no way I can get it. And they never will. But let's say you are one of those people that says, you know what, I want that check bad enough because it will fix my life in every way imaginable. And I think the reward is worth the risk. And you first learn it takes you a year to learn how to properly use all the equipment, how to properly climb a mountain, how to get in shape for it. You didn't just try and make the attempt at that moment. You put in a year's worth of effort to get all the right equipment, to learn all the right hints and suggestions and techniques, and you got yourself in shape to do it. And even with that, you slip and fall. You're freezing. It gets harder and harder to breathe. You're very tired. You don't think you can do it, but you muster through, and you fight the storms and the, the near-death experiences, and you walk past all of the dead people, and it scares you, but yet you still post and pull through, and you finally reach the top. You get into that mailbox. You open the door. You pull out the check, and there you have it. Your life has changed forever. See how exciting that is? It was just getting mail but it was the way you did it. So if you think of something as simple as comic books, as, eh, you know, I'm just getting some books, trying to make some money, I can't, I can't really succeed, and I'm just doing enough to get by, and I, I never get the comics I want, and, you know, I can't get that book because it's too expensive or it's too hard, or, you know, I'm jealous of everybody else, and you're just sitting on your couch and you're doing nothing to get the things that you want and changing your mindset, guess what? You get what you ask for. Because in your head, you want 
a certain book. But in your heart, you don't believe you can do what it takes to get it. So it's not what your brain thinks that creates the reality. It is what the heart feels. Because you can lie to everybody in your life. You can even lie to yourself. But you can't lie to truth. And your heart, the way you feel, is truth. But most people are afraid to speak from their heart. They only speak from their mind. Because then they can convince themselves of things that they will never do or never say or never be. And is it any wonder why the majority of people in life are followers or angry or depressed? Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that you won't be angry, you won't be following something, or you won't be depressed, but you'll, if you change your mindset, you'll get past those hurdles. You will get knocked down, but you will get up again. Because remember, if you ever watch the Rocky movies, in the first Rocky movie, he loses. At the end of the movie, the hero doesn't win. He loses. But yet, he didn't give up. He could have easily said, well, I did, I did my best and I lost, so that's it. I give up. But he worked harder. He put the passion and the joy of what he was achieving. And he won. And then, in the third movie, and this is pretty much how life is, you get he got complacent. He got to the point where, well, I'm already on top. I don't have to do anything more. I've already achieved my goal. And what happens? Clubber Lang, a.k.a. Mr. T, comes and knocks the living crap out of him. And he loses his title. But what that did was that depression, that downfall, that losing all that he took for granted motivated him to inspire himself to get back to where he needed to be. Sometimes you need that kick in the pants to remind you. But most people, when they get kicked in the pants, they sit down and stay down. And again, because life will give you what you, what you feel in your heart, not what you think in your brain, you get what you, what you wish. You get what you give. So I'm going to end this video here because this is a very deep video. Not a lot of people are going to watch this video. Very few are going to listen to it. If you've reached this far and it makes sense to you and it resonates with you, in other words, it feels like, wow, this is the path I want to be on or I need to be on or this is something I've been waiting to hear or something I kind of knew about but this came at the right moment, then it's now up to you to do what it takes to get to that next level. And if that means listening to this 50 times, if it helps you, then do it. You control your own de destiny to a certain extent. And always remember that just because you do everything that it takes to get something does not guarantee success. So if you fail, just say another opportunity will present itself. Because like with that Tales of Suspense number 52, I've missed many opportunities and I wanted that book. But I didn't want it bad enough to go outside of what I thought was what I was looking for. I wasn't going to spend $900 on a $200 book just to say I got it. And there are plenty of people that will do that. Why do that if you don't have to? That's all on you. And if you're not willing to take the responsibility and the effort and become humble and see that it's what you project of the things that come to you which dictate the route that you go, you'll never get to another level and you'll always be one of the people that's in that large crowd of people who will doubt. And I'm going to leave you with this. I view the majority of people, because there's always exceptions to every rule, of course, but the majority of people who are followers who are depressed and bitter and angry, I view it like a tree, an apple tree. The, the fruits on the bottom of the tree, or the ones that fall to the ground, they're all over the place. They're easy pickings. You can get those easily because they're scattered all over the place. But they don't get as much sunlight. They, the ones that fall to the bottom, are rotting, filled with bugs and insects, or rolling around in the dirt and what else has been around. Those are not the ones that you want. The best fruits on that apple tree are all the way at the top. The ones that are the first to get that first drop of water when it rains. The ones that get that first ray of sunlight, which is what they feed off of, the energy of the sun. 
but they're not easy to acquire and there's a lot less of them but there are going to be the healthiest ones they're going to be the best tasting ones they're going to be the ones that everybody on the bottom wishes they could get so you have to say to yourself do you want to get what's always easy and what everybody else is following and get one of those easily obtained bad apples that are going to be rotten but they're going to be all over and they're going to be easy to get or are you willing to try and climb up that tree and maybe scratch yourself along the way or maybe fall down a couple of times or maybe find how difficult it is and how far out of reach they are but end up working harder to get that as motivation of saying I want that best apple I won't settle for what's on the ground just because it's easy because once you achieve that and you break through and you get that great apple and you take that bite you'll notice the difference and you'll also be proud of your achievements so yes in the grand scheme of things these are just comic books they're pieces of paper with some pictures on them and a couple of words but if you utilize this in all aspects of your life not just comic books you're gonna have not a guarantee of success but a much better chance of it instead of being one of those people who will spend 10 years on the internet having a bunch of people pat them on their back for how ingenious their attack was or their insult was or how much they were hating on somebody because it was just popular to do but 10 years later still is that bitter angry person while well, many people flew past them those people are the birds sitting in the nest waiting for their mama bird to come feed them because it's easier it's safer and they wonder why they don't get to see the world around them because they're too afraid to fly they're too afraid of the effort it takes to get the wings to expand and get strong enough and I'm actually gonna leave you with one more a little story think of it as a story of inspiration and to those who watched this far thank you very much tell me what you thought about this story it was a little girl walking in a path in the woods right behind her house and as she's walking along she's enjoying nature and just you know checking out all the pretty little flowers and looking at all of the the birds flying around the all the raccoons and squirrels all the beauty of nature just enjoying being living in the moment and she's grabbing a couple of twigs and branches and putting her hands in the flowers as she's strolling along big smile on her face and all of a sudden comes along this little branch where she sees this cocoon and she takes the cocoon puts it in her hand and sees that something's trying to get out like it's wiggling and to her amazement she sees a little bit of something trying to get through but she notices that it's having a very hard time getting out so as a little girl who's thinking she's doing something good she pries open the cocoon thinking she's helping this creature and when she opens the cocoon she notices that it's actually a butterfly and the wings stay curled and it's walking on her finger and she's like wow I did such a beautiful thing I helped this butterfly escape its cocoon I did a good thing well what happens is that butterfly goes to the tip of her finger and as it tries to fly away it falls to the ground and it dies and this little girl is devastated she's like why did that beautiful butterfly die I helped it get out of its cocoon it was trapped it was struggling I did a good thing why did it die so she runs home crying and tells her father what happened and the father goes to his little library and pulls out a book about butterflies and they learn together that when a butterfly is in its cocoon the struggle is to build up the strength for the wings to be able to fly so it needs that struggle to rip open that cocoon and when that little girl with her intention being good 
opened the cocoon for the butterfly, the butterfly did not have the ability to create the strength it needed to get out of that cocoon so it could fly. So not everything in life that's bad or hard is necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes it builds character. Sometimes it builds strength. Sometimes it builds motivation. It's the ones that say, woe is me. It was, it's the ones that say, I can't. It's the ones that give up are the ones that never learn to fly. It's the ones waiting for somebody else to do everything for them. Tell them how to live, how to think, what to believe in, what to like and not like. These are life-changing things. And this is something I want to share. And I promise you, there will be people that will mock me for this, insult me for this. But those people, I don't care about. Because I promise you, those people will always need something to mock. Because that means it takes the focus off of them and projects it somewhere else. So they don't have to put the effort in it takes to better their lives. Because you may have a million dollars. doesn't buy you happiness. As a matter of fact, some of the higher suicide rates are among the most wealthiest of people because they hide behind their wealth thinking it solves all their problems. It just creates new ones. And if you don't fix and help yourself, well, nothing you surround yourself with will ever make you happy. See, I don't buy comic books to make me happy. I buy comic books because they increase my happiness. There's a huge difference. If you purchase anything in hopes it will make you happy, it's a temporary fix. So change your mindset. Put in the effort it takes. Think positive. And realize that it's going to be many challenges in the beginning. You'll, you will be tested. We'll see who are the ones that give up after one or two tries and the ones that keep pushing through until they finally break through of that difficult cocoon and they build up the strength to fly. Which one are you? And the beautiful thing is, even if it's, that's not you now, it doesn't mean it can't be you. It all depends on you and what you're willing to do. There's a price to pay for anything you do in life or anything you don't do in life. When you take that on to yourself instead of projecting it to other people and taking it as somebody else's responsibility or somebody else's problem and you own it you will increase your chances of getting the things that you want and if you don't hey if you did your best that's all you can do better to try and fail than to never try at all so if what I say you give up you can always go back to the way you are. That's the beautiful thing in life. You're limited to your own choices and ideas and thought processes. So if this helped, if you want to give it a thumbs up, that's great. If you listen this far, let me know what you thought about this. And if this was something crazy, then the best part is you're not even listening to this right now. So I would probably say this video will probably get about 500 views at most. My usual videos are about 900 to 1,000 to 1,500 the first day. This one will get between three and 500. And of the three and 500, I would say probably less than 20 would listen to the end. And that will show how few people are willing to do the extra mile and do what it takes to better their lives, even if their lives are okay. And that's who this is for. So let me know if you're one of those people. So thanks for listening. I hope this inspired somebody or made somebody think in a different way or see things in a different light. Maybe start looking into quantum physics, quantum mechanics. Learn how the universe really works. A lot of things in the universe you can't see, taste, touch, feel, or even know is there. It doesn't mean it's not affecting you. You know, I wouldn't recommend this, but jump into a giant microwave and have somebody close the door and turn it on. You're not going to see the microwaves that are cooking you from the inside. But if you don't think it's going to affect you, you're going to find out the hard way real quick. That's why I don't recommend doing it or putting anything in a microwave. Don't do anything stupid like that. But my point is, just because you don't see something or just because you think something isn't there does not mean it's not affecting you or can affect you. Thanks for listening.